Welcome back to all of our viewers for Tim Z Podcast. Just to let you know, we are not abandoning live. We will still be there. We're just trying to take the steps toward that full-fledged podcast. So in advance, apologize for any low-quality audio. However, we definitely mm -hmm. want to get this thing rolling. So you guys have the capability to listen to us on many different platforms and to extend the conversation. With that being said, I'm happy to be here for our very first episode Why, yes, on of YouTube. Course. We need some sound. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our first ever episode on YouTube. I'm so excited, if you can't tell, with the woo. The, the sound. <laughs> with the woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was too many woos for today. But as Patrick said, we're definitely not abandoning live. We love connecting with you guys on live. And we'll be introducing some newer um, aspects to the Instagram live as well. It'll be more like, you know, incorporative and like um, collaborative with you guys. And like, you guys will get to see us and we'll get to see you. It'll be a fun, good time on live. But until then, we're taking our steps to start the podcast. We're, we're launching our first episode today. Let's get right into it. Patrick, would you please introduce today's topic? No, I don't feel like I should. I think I think you really should <laughs> before like that no, no. ball that ball interrupts you. <laughs> you wait um, until you start the podcast and go, man, I, I don't know. It's not my responsibility. <laughs> you know, it's not mine. It's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's just mine. I just <laughs> let's go. All right, so today we'll be talking about something that impacts all of our lives, at least that you know, something that we both came up with especially in a capitalistic country in which we live, and that will be consumerism. So, Mr. Hassan, my first question to you, as a consumer, do you feel like you have a choice? Oh yeah, you, you definitely have a choice on what you decide to buy in like any given time or like, you know, wherever you find yourself. You have the choice to spend your money however, however you however you want. You want to spend if you want to spend it within your interest, that's fine. If you just want to blow it at like a strip club, that's also fine. You know, so um, as consumers, we do have a choice to like you know spend our money however we want. But um, there tends to be a problem where consumerism just becomes like too much, where like we just wake up and just spend the rest of our days just buying and buying and buying without like thinking it becomes sort of like second nature and that's when right. like you know, i would say it's a problem when like you're spending money that like you know you might not necessarily even have or like you're not necessarily budgeted you just want the convenience of just getting that thing and that instant gratification of like having it now like in the moment you know like an example would be amazon like I call it super prime because how on earth do they get Cheerio items to you in a day? Like that that shouldn't happen. I don't I don't think like you necessarily need it that badly, like in one day. You, you get right. what I'm coming from, right? Yeah. yeah. Well how how would you what would be your thoughts on this? Do you think we have a choice or like you know? Pardon me. I believe that we do, but I think there's almost two sides to that. So first what you spoke on is just the choice in, you know, our purchasing behavior. Yeah. And I believe, you know, in the current climate of things, we have to watch that, be aware that, I guess the other side of that coin would be the choice, the option of choice. So when it comes to what I'm buying, where it's coming from, so do you really have a choice? So again, if you want to invest in a luxury item, and I know we mm -hmm. sort of touched on this, yeah. briefly touched on it, but, you know, if I want to go buy something from, you know, whatever, Hennessy or this or that, more times uh, than not, that's, that's owned by LVMH. So I guess, mm -hmm. you know, do we have a choice in, I guess, the diversity of the products that we are purchasing? So is it just from one entity or can I have the choice to go here or there? And I feel like sometimes we're, I guess you could say blinded by that because you don't really realize it, but you see all the different products and brands that you do enjoy. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, 
when I'm buying, when I'm using my purchasing power, do I have the choice on where that's going? Or is it usually just capped off to, I don't know, like 10 different companies? Yeah. And and it's interesting that you brought that up. And like, I think a lot of the general public don't pay attention to this type of news. We don't necessarily even like, I don't think we're that aware about these large conglomerates that end up like owning a, like a huge um, share of like whatever products are being like, mm-hmm. you know, um, sold everywhere, like a daily product. Like you just mentioned Hennessy. I don't think a regular person out there knows about LVMH. Like, it, like if you tell somebody, if you were to tell somebody that Louis Vuitton and like Hennessy and Moet are like all owned by one company, exactly. I think it's baffling. <laughs> For them, they just want any, you know, like for somebody who just wants a product from Louis Vuitton. So like, you know, having like that huge company own that could like, you know, I think it's eye opening that we're talking about it and have people be aware of this. And it's not just for like LVMH, the other like, you know, we have Farfetch owning like almost every big brand in the fashion industry now. And like, you know, the stocks are like going up. We also have the NGG, which is the new guards group that's also buying a lot of like, you know, all of like these big like you know companies in the fashion right. industry i only know about like my interest that's what i'm talking about like the fashion industry but usually when it comes to like you know um um retail or stuff like that they start off like you know as like a, a designer someone you know starts this brand from the startup like you know builds it up and builds a following so it's making mm-hmm. like decent amount of profit and then conglomerates are like this big, big, I said big, <laughs> my action to step down. These, these very big uh, companies, they come in and like, you know, they kind of like swoop in and just like maximize and like pound down on the profit aspect of it. Now you as a consumer, I don't think you're paying any attention to this. In your mind, they're just buying the product and you don't know what that money is being like sent to. But like my next, this would actually lead us into like, you know, the next part of like, you know, this okay. um, conversation. Like in this world of lockdown, how do we spend responsibly? We all know you guys got the checks that twelve hundred. Um, we know some Man, of y'all just went ahead and like blow that money. Blew that. Blow we, money fast. Blew that. <laughs> like you know, we just went like that online on every website. I know I did. I'd have bought a lot of stuff. Oh my god. But <laughs> but like you know, in this new world of lockdown, how would you say you spent responsibly? Or how would you govern yourself to spend? responsibly keeping in mind the conversation we've had about you know the conglomerate owning like you know almost a fair share of all the daily necessities personally i believe it comes down to you know not only i guess deciding what your wants and your needs are because really right now it's just about fulfilling your needs i would say um so what i've been doing is just strictly what i need so i have clothing i have shoes i have this i have that so right now you know i'm not going anywhere really to say hey i need new shoes this and that like because i really don't the only thing i would truly do something for is is it's for my own personal health or something else that i need so for example we're trying to do the podcast the right way so yeah, we'll buy more equipment. We'll do this. We'll do that. So we can mm-hmm. make sure the quality of that is good. That's something that is important to us. So we will spend and put money into those things. However, I feel that it's a little bit irresponsible to then just completely put all the money back. I mean, I think on a very watered down scale, that's pretty much yeah. how our economy works. Exactly. I think that's why you sent the into, 1200 to Probably so. Because they need something to stimulate so, like, the economy. Keep it afloat. Yeah. And exactly. stimulus. <laughs> Check. Um, just stimulate my pockets. I'll tell you that for sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's the thing. They know people are very eager to get back out here. So, I, again, I think there's like, it could be multiple layers to that, honestly. So, I feel like we have to be responsible in ourselves to realize that this is actually money that you've earned in the past. It's, you know, I feel like it's part of that. Every time you see your check and all that stuff is taken out, this is a lot of that coming back to you. So it's not just like, okay, free money, you know, but you've, you've worked for it. 
And that's why there's a cap on it because it cuts off. So if you took time to look at the breakdown, you'll see where they pulled that figure from. So it's money that you've earned. It's actually your money. They're just giving it back to you just because of the circumstances. But I feel that, mm -hmm. you know, there is a responsibility as you, you know, pardon me, on you as a consumer to spend responsibly to make sure that you're putting other things um, you know, I, I mean, for example, I think we spoke about the other day, I was watching something the dude was saying, hey, it's either feeding my family or paying the rent, keeping oh, the roof over the head. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for me, I would just say, you know, just to speak on, you know, I don't know what his circumstances, but yeah, exactly. I feel like being responsible is, okay, in that instance, Look, let me, I have to talk to my kids. Look, we gonna eat oatmeal for every meal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, we gotta keep this roof up, but you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've been doing. Not not oatmeal necessarily, but I haven't been eating yeah, lunch nasty. because it's not really necessary. Like I'll, I have a good yeah. breakfast um, and then I'll have, I mean, I'll drink water throughout the day and then, you know, fruits and stuff like that. And then maybe like, some sort of like this, like a peanut butter bar before I do my workout and then I'll eat dinner because I'm not really expending yeah. all this extra energy where I need that You're not extra walking little anywhere. refueling pocket. Yeah, I feel like yeah. right now we're trying to adjust to because when you're outside and everything like that, you're, you're not thinking I guess you're, as much. Yeah, you're more prone to spend things like, oh, I'm thirsty. Like, let me run into the store. Ooh, let me like, mm. you know, but now it's exactly. more so. I don't really need to do that. Like, do I really need yeah. to order this pizza? Like, because I'm really just sitting here. I mean, again, you shouldn't not treat yourself. I'm not saying, oh, don't do it's anything. Just, it's, it's a problem when it becomes a habit, like, a, like you know, exactly. something you, you develop and start doing, like, most of the time. Um, I definitely understand that. I also think people should spend in the way where they're supporting, like, you know, local businesses as well, like, you know. Usually when we, like, let's say you want to order pizza, what's the first company that comes to mind? Yeah. You know, oh, exactly. Okay. You know, and that's a big chain. That's a, like, basically like a fast food chain, you know? So I'll say, yes, yeah, the checks, you've earned it. I mean, the IRS are the ones delivering these checks. Like, that should give you a hint as, like, where these, this money is being, like, you know, recruited mm -hmm. from. But also, like, when it comes in, with your new way of life, I'm actually very proud of myself. I'm going to blow my own horn with this. I can't press the horn right now, but uh, <laughs> that would have been a perfect, like, you know, timing. But um, my credit card, like, I've not utilized my credit card during this whole entire pandemic. Like, thing. I think Good. the only charge on my credit card is my Apple, like, iCloud thing, which is only 99 cents, you know. So, yeah, like, I mean, that's... This whole entire thing, if I'm home, I'm not necessarily going out there to shop. I only shop when, you know, it's, it's like groceries or I'm going to the laundry or like, you know, I'm running out of like food or like, you know, certain things at home, like, you know, soap or stuff like that. That's where, when I'll go like, you know, kind of spend some of my, and even that is not that much. And also like, like you said, as Ramadan, I'm fasting, so I'm getting used to not even eating as much. But prior to this, I only ate about like, I'll say once a day regardless of like, you know, it's more like protein bars and like stuff like that. But like one huge meal was usually what I had and like that was sufficient. Like, exactly. Um, if you have my, if I have my coffee or my tea, like that's fine, you know, but like something you happened as soon as I got the check. Yeah, what's up? What? No, go ahead, go ahead. Tell um, your story. What so you uh, <laughs> I started like, you know, doing more research within the fashion industry. Like uh, that's what I'm genuinely interested in. Right. Making happy. So. I was learning a lot more and like, you know, I started learning about fabrics and different like, you know, types of fabrics, the quality, different designers. And then before you know it, it's the transition into like, you know, looking at clothes online. And then before you know it, I don't, I spent mm -hmm. like, you know, a considerate, I'm not going to mention that amount, but I spent a considerate amount on like, you know, just clothes and shoes. And I, I just had to like sit down recently to tell myself, okay, hey, you're not going anywhere. I get it. You want to look good. Bro. Like, I'm about yeah. to get this whole check back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think I, I'll put a pause on that for now. Uh. But with me, it's not also just purchasing. Like I genuinely like dressing well, and I also recently started recording like YouTube fashion videos. So it's a way of like, right. you know, like 
getting some content for that and like actually like you know beefing it up dressing up and having some variety so but also that could be used as an excuse and i'm not trying to do that so um spending but you know what you would just have to like balance things out you made a you made a good point speaking on like supporting local business so our first point um when we focused on do you have choice so if you don't support those businesses if you really you know if it is whatever if it's dinner time and just say okay cool i'm gonna have pizza all right cool mm -hmm. whatever buy it from the place that you know you can't get this pizza from a pizza hut or a papa john's or domino's or i don't exactly. know whatever because then if that place doesn't exist any longer, then they just absorb more of the marketplace and you'll be sitting there wondering, well, I don't have this or that. So that does pull away some of your option, which then takes away your choice as a consumer. So I don't think people realize that either. Like, okay, you could go here, go there, but I mean, support those things in your neighborhood or even just in your city. If it's within reason, you know, don't, I wouldn't say travel, three hours away just i mean if you really love it <laughs> if it's really I mean, good hey i mean i I've guess you ain't it. got nothing else to do i've done it <laughs> you know i've but, gone like far places for food so definitely yeah if it's worth it you you know how to get to it yeah so i mean if it i just feel that that's something that takes away from our options as well we kind of i'm not gonna say we do it to ourselves but in a way we do in a sense that we do and we'll talk about it later on in the in this episode that our power of a power of the consumer as well. Yeah, most definitely. Um, again, like when it comes down to like the choice that you've mentioned, supporting like small businesses doesn't have to be necessarily you going out of your way to kind of find this tiny little business that's checked in the middle of nowhere and like you know, like forcing yourself to support it. Your daily needs, like um. Even a, a small thing is such as like even like you know going to um your deli and like you know getting mm -hmm. your normal coffee from there instead of like buying it from a huge chain. I'm not gonna mention the names because you know, but right. like you know that is still support or like making them know that like yo this money is here. We need to put it back in the economy. I I'd rather do it through you so you have like you know sustenance to continue your business and like be part of the community because like I think right. like, well, even as like as what community actually means and like you know what like supporting each other in the community stands for, you know. So I'll say hey if you got your check and you want to shop, support like a black designer. I've been looking at Pierre Morse like a lot. I've been looking through his stuff. I just haven't found the one thing in there that like I really want just yet. But I still want to support him. I still want to purchase from him. So like if you're into fashion, look at the black look to black designers. If you're into food, look to like places that like, you know, are owned by minorities or like places that you know like your purchase means a lot to them. Um right. if you're into let's say God oh, music, we have title. <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I mean know, that was a little <laughs> yeah. I mean he tried it's, to it's... title on me. Like remember when you used to go, yo, this is a title, like try this, you know, like I mean, title is good and all, but like SoundCloud also is free, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you do get my point. Like, maybe title yeah, is yeah, yeah. Us, but like, you know what I mean? Just like support your friends or like your barber, give him a little something. Like, you know, I mean, I just got recently got a haircut because my dude called me and was like, damn, you're looking crazy out here. So, like, let me bless you. And like, you know, the tip was like hefty, but like he needs it to like sustain himself. That's his stuff and that's True. his job. You understand? So like those yeah. are like small things you could do. And that's where like your choice comes into place, you know. Otherwise we could all spend like, yeah, I got twelve hundred. I could just go spend it on one bag and twelve hundred is gone. Like that. Just like that. You know? So <laughs> well, I mean it is I feel like too that um it just really comes down to doing your research. And yeah. you spoke about Amazon. I feel that they've really done a good job at catering to, I would say, how American society is now. We just want everything right away. Everybody's so impatient for everything. So exactly. I need this. I need that. But 
if you order it from <laughs> such and such, you know, that you know has their own little business out their house and it, they can get it to you in, I don't, let's just say five days versus two days. Is it really the end of the world? Exactly. <laughs> if it's clothed and you're not wearing it anywhere, like, what, what are you going to yeah. do? Like, I mean, I do this on TikTok where I, like, put on outfits and, like, walk in front of the camera at home. But as soon as the video is done, I'm changing right into my comfortable clothes. So, like, you know, it's exactly. not necessarily, like, like, a necessity. And speaking about Amazon, actually, like, it's interesting to see how they've actually molded the business plan according to, like, fit the American like, society, like, that well. Like, they've done it to the teeth, to the point that, like, you want something today, you're going to get it today, you know. They have mm-hmm. different plans, and they keep buying everything. Like, we, we're going back to some grammar here. Like, people don't understand that Amazon owns a lot more things than, like, than they know, you know. And they've oh, yeah. done a lot of businesses out of, like, you know, they've taken a lot of a business out of business than, like, you know, people are aware of. And, like, especially on their platform, let's say I made, um, I make posters to sell, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it cost me, like, about... 99 cents to make these right but to like you know make profit i'll put it up for 3.99 because i have to pay for manufacturing i also have to pay for marketing and blah blah blah. and amazon also takes their share amazon will see that and like you know since they have the capital for it they would make they'll make it for cheaper though exactly. probably like the amazon they take a loss yeah they take <laughs> a loss from production they took a loss from production and like you know They'll probably make it for ninety nine cents and sell it for a dollar fifty. And now, like, now it comes down to you as a consumer to know who to support. So even if you're on that platform, I'll still like usually when I'm buying on Amazon, I still try to find legitimate businesses over there to like kind of give my support to instead of buying Amazon Basics. And mostly the Amazon Basics stuff is not that great in ways. Like it's very like you know, low tier the quality. Is, it's quite some of it. I think it. I think the overall point is just we have to realize that being responsible does impact our own choice, our own buying power. Because again, if everything else just gets taken out the way, like Amazon does a good job at that. I would say Walmart as well, because oh yeah, all right, maybe I'm someone like, okay, I franchise the subway. I, I'm pretty sure you can do that if, if I'm wrong. Yeah, you can still bad. do that. You can, but, you can do that. You know, if I'm doing that, I'm down the street, and then a Walmart opens over here. Now, maybe that's gone for me because guess what's going to be in there? Guess what's going to be, you know, there's mm-hmm. a hairdresser going to be in there. So everything is in there. So, you know, then people are like, oh, whatever happened to such and such that used to, well, you stopped going to them. Yeah. Yeah. Because the big old. Because, of, thing, again, I get it. Box, I get yeah. it. Always convenience. Everybody convenience. Want everything now. But we have to realize that. It also comes down to how you delegate your time and are you responsible with your time too? Because time does play into our um, purchasing behavior too. Because if you feel that, oh, I don't have enough time, maybe if you plan better, you would have had time to, you know, maybe go to that gentleman that makes suits handmade in your neighborhood. But now you're just going to run into this department store, or, you, you know, so. And just, and just pick it up. I mean, yeah. So again, it just comes down to just like identifying like, you know, like where your needs are coming from, like the urge to like purchase something and like sitting down and like thinking about it and and, like, you know, making the decision to like make a choice, but also having all these factors play into that decision. Like, you know, okay, if I don't buy it from here or I could support a small business or like, you know, where is like, am I being directed to buy this or is this like from my own mm-hmm. role because like advertisements and like everything like that has to play into it too even music videos are like usually advertisements nowadays like you know, all these brands are just like lending clothes out to all these celebrities people see it and like True. very impressionable like people would just like you know go on and want to wear like some of that items but i get it it's part of the business it's just you know i read i read yeah, something crazy that as consumers we get exposed to i don't know they said maybe like over six thousand ads every day dude don't you dream about like no i hate when this happens like i'd be having a different conversation <laughs> but that shit is crazy though 
toxic. Dude, like, sometimes you just think about something and you go and, like, let's say on your Instagram and there's an ad for it. I'm like, wait a minute, yo. Yeah. No way. No way. Like, what are you doing? I was texting my friend about this. Why am I getting an ad? But they do data mining. And, like, I actually met someone, someone that works for a company like that where, like, if you go on the website, there's actually, like, a pixel on the website that's, like, showing mm-hmm. your information. And they sell those information, and it's perfectly legal for them to do that. And that's how they provide really targeted ads. So 6,000, I even think, is the minimum. Like, on every, like, you know, everywhere you go now, there's just ads, like, popping up everywhere. Like, but you don't know, even realize it, though. It's like you're going throughout your day, but then when you actually kind of retrace your steps, I guess you would say, you you know, you remember those, okay, this was an ad I was looking through whatever, I was on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Now, okay, I remember seeing this, this, and this pop up. And like you said, someone's exactly. music. I've even seen that where, oh, check out my album. And I'm like, the hell? Like, no. You, <laughs> you know, so it's... Get off my feed. <laughs> yeah, like even even today, I, I feel like before even I hopping on this, and again, I, I didn't really do much on my computer or anything like that, but there was an ad here, ad there. I feel like I've already seen like 20 or so, but such is the world we live in. Yeah, I mean, just, we're just moving towards a very like, it's like just going up and up and up. Like if there's a slope, it just keeps, and there's no like, you know, I guess wherever, like, you know, wherever there's a slope and it reaches its peak, it's gonna like, you know, gradually like, you know, <laughs> be fine at some point, but like, at this point, even like during quarantine, our spending habits have even like doubled, I'd say. Like online, like, you know, reports have shown that like the money is literally being circulated and like the economy, like at crazy amount. People are still buying like online retail. It's like, again, I'm talking about fashion, but that's what I'm like interested in. Exactly. Like, at sense, profits and everything, they're showing like, you know, an increase in their sales because people are bored and just buy these things. So, yeah, the company's still making money during this pandemic. But this leads us to the third part of like, you know, conversation i'd like mm-hmm. to ask you senor senor last week uh as we've been left to figure out a lot on our own during the pandemic how do we become more responsible consumers and how can we produce on our own not kids but produce on our own now <laughs> like, i know you know people. quarantine hey, babies hey, hey. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you <laughs> might want to put a little practice in. So when it's oh my god, you know, I like, mean, babies called COVID. <laughs> what did Emma Smith say? Carcini. All Carcini men are created field. equal, but the real work happens in preseason. So it's the preseason now. So you're oh trying to get the best. Okay, what you want? <laughs> <laughs> no kids. You don't want a kid. I'm telling you. I'm playing. I mean, so someone might uh, produce, not reproduce. Let me let me emphasize that statement. How can we produce on our own? I didn't put no re in front of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just to emphasize. I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look. If you don't, if you want to avoid the reproducing, maybe just. Pull up the only fan, something like that. Do what you got to do. You know, just clean up though. Anyway, guys. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. I feel that during the lockdown, we've seen perfect examples of that even if it's just making masks, so people making masks at home, doing this, doing that. So I believe as people that we can be very self-sufficient. I just think we've become so dependent on other things and don't realize that we can be very independent, and then that can lead to interdependence working with other people so hopefully where we can have this sense of synergy like with the ultimate type of goal and i see it now i have a friend she was telling me how she was just growing stuff in her window and that's in new york and just showing me all the stuff she grew like a bunch of stuff so now she you know she I, I, granted it takes some time for that stuff to grow so like, but now she yeah. doesn't have to go to the store and buy this buy that like she can just get some herbs from right get here from and it. start cooking with it. Make it so that yeah, saves yeah. you money and now you can put that money elsewhere or even like you said you put your whole stimulus check back in there because you thought you were about to spend all this money but, <laughs> <laughs> but um you know, all right, just keep the clothes that you got. I'm saying, Reuse, you know, this is me on the website. So I'm just looking at the clothes, like, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're a big, 
advocate for um, thrift shopping. So even now, oh, yeah. just get the whole lifespan out of your clothing. I'm not saying walking around with holes in your socks. I mean, you're home <laughs> now, so I guess if you want to, cool. No make sure your feet are washed. But, you know, <laughs> again, get the whole life out of your items that you're going to use. And oh, yes, for sure. Wait, wait, go I ahead. Mean, go. What, I do, what do you, I do what have this rule. I do have this rule back to the clothing, like whenever you buy something, you sell something. So I think I told you last time, like when I bought a whole bunch of stuff, I also like went through my closet and found things that I haven't worn and like things that I haven't utilized to their full potential to like, you know, sell it so someone else could use it. And that way I'm still like not spending too right. much money. So then like something back, you know. So that that's how, that's one way you could be like responsible during this like, you know, pandemic and like, you know, with your own consumer behavior or like behavioral characteristics and also um another way you could do it like i like the fact that you brought up masks because i used i helped my dad in like the store a bunch of times and like mm. people would come in there and buy like supplies to go make masks and sell it like you know that's a way of that's another there's a big old wax that literally just came like right so close to me let me just all right um <laughs> um yeah like i was saying <laughs> okay like i was saying <laughs> that's another way those people are con- contributing to the economy and like their communities because they're buying these things they're going home to make it that's a way that's another way for them to like generate the income and like you know pay for the utilities and rent and all that stuff exactly While and your like, father you, is a local business yes so yes, that's exactly. you're stopping that right there and now he can benefit from that so now when someone a customer oh man i really like going to this store Da da da! It'll still be there. Versus yeah, it did. It actually did happen when we closed for for the pandemic, and then like we just started getting a lot of like you know messages and requests for us to come back because like that store was very essential to the, like the neighborhood. And, mm-hmm. you know, like even when people came in, there were more like obviously you have your crazy people that just don't give a damn and they say whatever. But like there are people that will look at you and go, "Yo, thank you for being in. Thank you for opening because we need this. We need it." Like a place to come get our supplies and like you guys took our source of desperation and like open back the source. So that that goes back and ties in with your point about synergy and like, you know, kinda like, you know, tying in with like the communal aspect of like um like, you know, helping the economy, but doing it in a way where we were helping each other in the process, you know, because at the end of the day, all those big companies are gonna profit. Like the real estate. Oh yeah, they'll be fine. In high end. They'll be fine. Exactly. Like they just they set up the business in a way where like you know it is gonna be profitable. Just in case like a pandemic or like you know the economy collapses, they're finding ways to still produce and like make their money. So you just contribute into that. Like it's just even putting a lot more money in their pockets. And there's someone at the top of like the pyramid that's like making all that bank. And you know, and when it comes to the actual people that put in the work usually like minimum wage or like yeah. something like that, you know. Barely so anything. I much rather give it to someone that I know that like, you know, he started from the ground up, like put the blood, tears and sweat into this and created a business. And I know they're helping people like, you know, get jobs and like, you know, the community as a whole. Then like, the rather and one thing, money. Yeah. My bad. One thing that I would say too is as people, you know, I'm going to save that. I'll save it. Save it? I mean, okay. yeah, yeah. I say no, no, no. I feel I'll like I feel like it closely out. relates to what we'll talk about you know the last point. Yeah. I mean I'm actually like gonna give a shout out to the Mexican spot downstairs. I really like that guy. That guy is just amazing. He took my package down for me when I wasn't home, you know. This is all this is all we're talking about, you know, like you know, just like knowing each other, like helping each other. I go to a shop sometimes, so like he knows that I'm his customer, so he he kinda like did a good deed for me because I wasn't going to be home. I couldn't take my package. But because I've been supporting his business from, like, you know, the time I moved to this neighborhood, he felt right. like, okay, I could take it. He doesn't even take packages. He told me, but, like, he's like, oh, but I know you. Like, you come here all the time. You ask how I'm doing. You know my wife. Like, you know my workers. So, hey, mm-hmm. I take it for you, you know. So that's just, like, an example of, like, you know, how we can all, like, tie into this, like, communal economy kind of thing, you know, and just helping each other. Um, becoming responsible, uh, you know, just, don't buy crap you don't need, man. I've seen people buy a whole bunch of, like, <laughs> like you know, people buying toys now. Like, grown ass men are buying toys just to put in the house. I'm like, because you got to check. Like, what do you need a bear brick for? Like, it's oh, 
a bear break. It's like this hype beast beat so like you can look it up post like I mean look I look I would say this. If it's something you truly, truly want. Dude, the toy doesn't do anything. You're putting well, the not, toy in your room. Well what I'm saying is expensive. What I'm saying is this like if if you can afford it, you know what I'm saying? Not like, okay, I can just go buy it. But if you can truly afford it, it's not going to hurt you. And it's something that you actually want for whatever reason. Maybe you just think you like the art, you like this, you like that. Then, cool. Like, I'm not going to knock anybody for that. But again, like you said, like, we want to look at the needs first and look at other ways to, you know, get those things. You know, be adventurous. Don't stay stuck on buying from one company. I, again, I feel like it's, we're just too dependent on that. So, again, during yeah. this pandemic, we've learned how to become a little bit more self-sufficient. So, we should keep yeah. those things going. Start a regimen for yourself or, you know, kind of plan things out. So, when you do return to work or pick up a new um, career, you know, hopefully everyone can get back to work eventually in their own right. But now you can kind of plan it out. Like, okay, all right, if I take this block of time out of my day, how would I make my own this, grow my own that, research yeah. this? Exactly. And actually, like, that, that brought up a good point in my, in my mind when you were talking. Uh, remember, like, we spoke about you, like, you know, kind of saving up for the future, like, gearing up for something like this again. Yeah. I think it's a great point to, like, you know, highlight, like, you know, okay, don't wait until – um, something like a pandemic happens before you start to like scramble and kind of like look around to see, hey, how am I going to pay rent? How am I going to do this? Instead exactly. of like plan ahead, like save your money. And that's one thing you've been hammering down in my head. Like every time we talk, you make it a point to bring it up that, hey, I think yeah, you should talk. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to take no chances. Cause even for me, like I'm not, I'm not someone that will talk about me saving to be, oh, I, I just want to brag and talk about, no, I do no, it no, because no. I want to, like, hopefully, like, share it. And, you know, when people ask, well, what have you been doing? Like, I just, I mean, that's what I've been doing. So, for me, you know, like I said, I have a blueprint of how my resources are being used. Okay, this is the plan. This is the plan for this week. I'm only going to spend $120 this mm -hmm. week. That means groceries, maybe some other need, and then I, I really haven't bought anything that I want, I would say. But mm -hmm. I have my rent paid through December as of right now. So See, exactly. So like even I'm if the good. check you know, stop coming in, like you're good I'm, until Yeah, December. I'm good for uh, quite a while. And I'm exactly. not gonna stop there. The goal is to get the whole twenty to twenty twenty one in and we good to go. Then okay. reward yourself by one. Yeah. So. Because uh, yeah, it's by it's by basic necessities. Accommodation is huge. If you don't have somewhere to live, you, where would you put all the stuff you're buying? Like it makes Yo, sense. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you toss that bed brick out. Put those shoes outside because now you don't you don't mess up. You you're really like you know didn't make the right choices. And so yeah, um, since we're all getting this like you know um kind of like I mean not all not, let me not generalize, but most of us like you know that have like kind. I've been furloughed or like put a pause. Yeah. On my, I've been put on pause from my job, but we're getting all these subsidies from like the government, and it's very easy to like spend that money when you get it because you think you have like a uh, continuous like um supply of income. But the I I say the right thing to do or the best thing to do at this point is to save up and gear up for the future because you don't know when like this pandemic is ending. You don't know if there's gonna be a second um like you know. A second um, wave of it. Yeah. People are acting super crazy outside, as you can tell, and like the and even you know, let's just say best case scenario, like if there is no second wave, or if the second wave is something where it's like, all right, it's manageable. You don't want to be ass out when, all right, now I'm back <laughs> to it. I done spent all my money on pizza and sneakers <laughs> and you know hbo right? subscription hey hey you know, hey, you know what i'm saying like you're hitting home <laughs> hey, you trying to come for me you're like, damn. so we're having a podcast man and hey, you know damn well if you go to your barber <laughs> somebody coming in there with the free uh fire stick that's jailbroken utilize yeah. that <laughs> one time purchase exactly. for 100 dollars 
So <laughs> if you don't know how to deal break your fire stick, that's on you. If you want to pay all those companies that money, that's on you. I don't care. I said it. And this is jail hypothetical too. You know, this is hypothetical talk. You know. Jail break your fire stick. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So going to the like, you know, the final part of the conversation, Senor Patrick, what is the power we hold as a consumer? And with that power, how can we push to ensure companies are more aligned with our values and not the other way around? Well, we have to realize that we hold all the power as a consumer. Without That's us the power right there. The company yeah. doesn't exist. Like it's very, yeah. it's very simple, but we forget it because again, we become so uh, dependent on these companies and so just absorbed into whatever's happening. So again, both of us really like fashion. So love. When it comes to a luxury brand, oh well, we you feel like you have to have it. Oh, well, uh, 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 I just have to buy it. Or uh, I need to do this because I, I, I'm going to this. Or, I, I, this is too many of that versus too much of that, pardon me. No, nah, for real, like, you know how people are. So I think it really needs to be more of, hey, I didn't like that. Or hey, from this season to this season, the designs have been miserable. Like, something exactly. is just, and you've, you've upped the price point so if people were just to stop buying it and saying, hey, this is what we need. Not that we don't like the brand, not that we don't like the designer, but you want me to spend $500 on a t-shirt? Like, come on. Okay, like, yeah, see, see exactly. I, I'm glad that you brought t-shirts. But again, it could be something, now again, if it's something that it's a, and you spoke on this before, if it's a one-time thing, cool. I can't justify it. I don't care how much money I'll make in life. I love I love luxury fashion and I would never spend five hundred dollars on a t shirt. Never. I'm saying never as in like you would never catch me spend I would even spend two fifty on a t shirt because it's a t shirt. At the end of the day, if you look at the cost of production and like how the t shirt is made, it wouldn't even say um go up to a, 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 like thirty dollars. And this mm-hmm. is from a luxury like, you know, company like all they're doing is usually with t-shirts they don't really go into deep production with it they don't like nah. hire that art actually just place plaster the logo on and call it a day and you expect me to pay that much because you're a high fashion retailer but usually they do that because they've studied consumer behavior and consumers are usually not aligned to like the the art artistic aspect of the brand they're more aligned to the very um hype or like the the name of the brand and that's why they were able to sell those t-shirts yeah, accessories feel, and t-shirts are what sell for a brand like yeah you feel that i think it's it's kind of like a um i don't even want to say a costume but when you put on all that you feel different you look different you you know yeah. what I'm saying? people think yeah they may think something else of you when that's not really the case exactly. i think also when we talk about making a Picking brands that align with your personal values, um, if you're a person that's rooted in principle. So I'm someone that loves sustainability. I'm someone that believes in doing right by the environment. That's another thing that we do as consumers. We don't take that into account. I would say, again, I can only speak about the country that I live in. I feel that in America, it's very more, 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 more. I'm like, okay. At okay. some point, you're gonna have to ask yourself, like, I, I need a break. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think we need to use this time to show that you don't need all of that. I've even like stopped certain things. I'm like, okay, usually when I go shopping and stuff, because how many people buy food and end up throwing it, throwing it away? Dude, I that really happened just yesterday, buy- and I was like so sad that I had to go. Yeah, it's it's out. okay. I'm gonna buy a box of this, a box of that, and it sits in the back of your cupboard. You just looking through it, like, oh damn, this expired and. 2014 it's like okay so you didn't need all of that i usually what i've been doing is shopping pretty much week to week weekly on a weekly on a week to week yeah. basis so you minimize like how much you're yeah. like, unless it's like a, a can sense. of beans or like oh it's like a beans. Beans. <laughs> nah, like, I, I like to make like a black bean burger like different type of things okay. but like you know if i do a, a vegan meal or something like that but it has to be a little more like okay let me not be so wasteful. Now to go back to what I was saying, to making a brand align with your values. Again, we hold all the power. If you don't spend, the brand doesn't make any money. So they're gonna wonder, why am I not making any money? The, The big problem here is that 
it usually takes for another brand to come along for that brand to then adjust. But I don't think we need to wait that long for that to happen. It could simply just be, let me push through now. And again, can we all be reach that point where we're at synergy? And that's going to be very hard to do. But I feel like if there's enough people, it doesn't have to be everybody, but if there's enough people, if you can draw enough awareness, then yeah, that will make people change their mind. Like for instance, I've stopped buying like Ziploc bags. This is um, and I don't mean to just I saw you talk talking about, about that actually. Yeah, yeah, it's called Stasher bags. So it's like a silicon type bag. It's it's owned by women, really? which is cool too because that's another it's important group of people. Yeah. yeah, and you can use it for multiple things. You can freeze it. You can just put. I don't know, like pens, pencils, and go to the park and draw. Oh, really? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, you can boil it. You can um, put it in the oven, all types of stuff. I think it's microwave, dishwasher safe. So there you go. So you, all you got to do is get like, I don't know, buy like 10 of those. And people are like, oh, my God, that's so expensive. But I'm like, okay, you're going to buy all these Ziploc bags. But it's like, okay, this week I went, I bought the Ziploc bag for, you know, a 50-pack, 100-pack for $8. So let's just say you're doing that every month, every whatever. I don't know. Maybe you got kids, so maybe you're doing that every two weeks because you're packing day, lunches, yeah. this and the third. That all adds up versus this. Just a one-time it's a, investment. Again, you get it's a, for over time. Like. I think it has to be a difference between, okay, I'm just making a purchase versus an investment. So use your purchasing power, like force that brand to do more than just be like, oh, our bad. But well, they don't really mean. It. I mean, <laughs> let me not. I don't want to generalize. No, no, buy maybe this. some. <laughs> yeah, maybe some. I feel like maybe there's some higher up that are like, damn, like we really messed up. So, I I, I think it could be genuine in some cases. I I can't say because I'm not there. But you know, for the most part, we wait for that, or we get handed that little cookie, and we're like, oh, okay, like I guess. You know, I guess it's fine now. Yeah. 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 I mean, what what are Um, your thoughts? Yeah, going back to brands, actually, I did like the fact that you highlighted the T-shirt thing. And I'd like to let people know that, like, usually most of it's it's a widely known thing in fashion where, like, most of these fashion retailers make their money from accessories, like their purses and their other items like that. And Mm -hmm. T-shirts are, like, basic stuff, like T-shirts, hoodies, and, like, you know, the actual clothes they put, like, a, a lot of work into, a lot of artistic, like, you know, like, you know, work into a lot of, like, you know, creativity and, like, th- those things are only appreciated by only a small sector of people that really, like, like that. And as us as, as consumers to, like, look into these things and, like, if you like art, like, you know, look into the other types of clothing they make. So, let's say there's this jacket that was, like, hand sewn Like, you know, you can admire that jacket. And, like, if you buy that jacket, you know it's going to last you a while. But, than just buying a t-shirt with a logo on it or like you know the hoodie with a logo on it yeah it's cool yeah you get your cool thing but then you just end up looking like everybody it's not about the logo it's more about like your personal style and finding things that fit into it because sometimes you can have a whole fashion like you know week or like you know a whole fashion like retail period and you wouldn't end up buying anything because you already have those basics in your closet and like if you want a statement piece and that's fine it's all about like knowing yourself and like knowing what you'd want to purchase and now when it comes to those purchases as well you can look to companies that support your values like we both talked about this supporting like you know black and minority owned businesses and like you know i always would use this example because he's at the pinnacle of what like blackness is in the fashion industry and he's made them conform to his beliefs kirby jean raymond like that guy just needs this man because he is great. The dude didn't compromise at all. Like, he owns everything he does. He right. uses his clothes to spread a very important message. And, like, the clothes are fire, too. The clothes are very well made, you know? So mm-hmm. he's adding all these aspects to it while letting them know that, look, you guys are not going to, like, have me, like, compromise to what you want. It's my company. It's my art. I'm Black. I get inspiration from my Blackness, and I'm going to create art from that thought. And now, like, you know, um, um, Wale is one of his biggest customers, and Wale made him direct a music video of his, which led to a direct, like, kind of um, result of, like, you know, an inmate being released. 
because of the way right. he directed the video. So, like, you know, there are people like this that, like, you can support. Like, you know, find people that, like, spread the message you can align yourself with, support them. And, and that that way, we would have a lot of other companies that are more, like, you know, aligned with ourselves. We could we could support their message. We could buy what they offer without without having any, like, you know, like, residual, residual thoughts in the back of your head. Like, okay, I'm just giving money to somebody to make him richer. Yeah, you're going to make him richer, but you, I'd much rather make, like, Kirby, someone like Kirby richer than, like, right. you know, but you know of a company too, who doesn't give a damn about me. It's, it comes down to this, too. It's just, you know, we spoke about this earlier. Just doing your research. So the amount of time that we'll spend searching through an Amazon or maybe some department stores app, those items are probably going to be there for a while. You'll be able to exactly. find those. Cool. Just do the research to see, hey, you know what, let me, even the other day I was looking up like natural mouthwash and I found mouthwash um, developed by a black owned company. So once this runs out, I'll buy that. And now yeah. is that is that going to just kill Listerine? Like, oh my God! Like, yeah, I'm sure they would still <laughs> like to have me as a customer. Your purchase, yeah. I'm pretty sure they'll be all right. And I think that's the bigger point that we're trying to say. Now, again, that's the thing. So if you see a brand that doesn't align with your values, not to say that they don't. I really, again, I probably maybe I need yeah. to do more research. Maybe they've done something. And, that and doesn't that's you to do your research. So like you know, exactly. no, I'm like. I even I, w- I was reading something crazy where um certain like companies tea tea making companies where the tea bags will have plastic in it so that plastic oh yeah, dude that was crazy and yeah. then you drink it so even that makes you think and again that be that's you know all those different layers that we talked about so now okay can I find a tea making company that doesn't do that and now maybe maybe I'll just cut that all off. And what I've been doing a lot during this lockdown, I could just make my own tea, you know? Yeah, you can, you, so, exactly. And it's even more fulfilling if you make your own tea. Like, I used to do it in Ghana. Like, you know, we had the tea leaves at home. And you mm-hmm. can go there, cut it. It's a whole process. It's kind of like a zen thing, too. Like, you get so into exactly. it. You make your ginger. And the, the tea tastes a lot better because you made it from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know? And so, the ingredients yeah, is right there. Like, I feel like all of that is, like, yeah, the if water. it's manufactured, like, it's not going to be as pure as, like, you know, you nah. pure ingredients and stuff, and making and having all those antioxidants and tea and stuff, you know. So it's not just limited to, like, you know, just, like, fashion. I'm just, I just use fashion as, like, as an example. Yeah, that's what you closely relate to. Yeah, you know? that's what I closely relate to, and, like, that's what I've been learning a lot more about. But it, it applies to all sorts of industry, the automotive industries, like, you know. Um, buy an electric car instead of like you know uh, that type of. Well, car. even then, you can. Mm-hmm. The whole thing with Tesla, right? Okay, you do a lot of this for the environment, but now you can see what What's that the mindset, owner's yeah. what his mindset is. So yeah, now you got to weigh that. So, is that the only electric car? No. No, that's Nikola. There's yeah. like you know the other other companies out there. I mean, hey, you like could go buy one from uh, you go buy one from Chevy. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. Now does he? You know, saying now he's opened his mouth. Now you can see where. Exactly. What's his, his main focus? Is. His main focus. I'm just gonna try to keep making money. Don't really care about my workers. Don't care about this. So on and so forth. So again, see where it aligns to your value. So now. If enough people stop buying that, he's oh, why is that? Why is this? And then he's seeing, okay, this is why. Now, is can he change who he is as an actual person? I don't know, but and would he be willing to? I have no clue. Yeah, that's but I, mean. <laughs> I bet you he's gonna try to make the adjustments. But now it's up to us to force that before someone else forces that, because yeah. then it's just kind of like a okay, something else came along. Now we're just dependent on this other thing. I think other thing, yeah. in that middle ground, you need to be there to say, okay, so whoever's going to come along next is like, okay, I need to do this. I need to fulfill these needs for these folks in order to get their business. That's what we need to do. You need to do this for me in order for me to invest in you. It's investing. Exactly. It's, it's just like, yeah. Um. Also, before we like, you know, get to the, end of this show i would like to you know introduce a new segment 
Uh, let me see if I could press the wool button. Okay, so that's not working. Interesting. Uh, I would like to introduce a new segment on like, you know, things we hate before, like not necessarily hate, but I'll say dislike, you know, what is one thing that you find really annoying that like people do or like, you know, you find online or something. There we go. So before I introduce the segment, we'll call this the wool segment. And Man, you can take it away. What is, <laughs> what is one thing you hate, Senor Patrick? I mean, one thing that I dislike, if, if we want to be a little more positive, yeah, as you said, yeah. one thing that I strongly dislike and that I've seen on full display, I mean, I, I've already spoken about um, trying to reach synergy through years. So I don't think I really need to speak mm -hmm. on that. I've, I feel that we can all see the issue with that. It's very simple, yeah. like, you know, Open. I don't want to wear the mask. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. Like, bro, just do it. Like, just do it. Just give someone else a sense of comfort. You don't have to. It's not, I'm not asking you to sew the mask to your damn face. So with that being said, one thing that I don't like is where we can't step out of our own worldview. Everybody gets stuck and confined to their own mind. It's so hard for them to just um, leave that. And we'll speak on this later when we go to live. Yeah. And that's something I want to bring up. But yeah. Everybody just gets stuck there. Like, just adventure out a little bit, you know. Yeah. Figure out, figure out why, why does Hassan feel like this? Why does Patrick feel like this? Let me step out of my own worldview again. When they're talking about something, don't be inside of their mind. Don't be inside of your mind, because then you're still in your own worldview of things. We all just get stuck in our own worldview, and honestly, when we're giving our opinion on things like. Oh, well, we, you don't need to wear a mask because I was a nurse uh, 20 years ago. Okay, this wasn't around 20 years ago. Exactly. So our knowledge is actually limited based upon our own experience. We haven't, like, you know, accumulated enough data to give a proper opinion on something. So yeah. what about you? Um, mine is super simple, actually. <laughs> I think we spoke about this prior to starting the podcast. Uh, it's when people don't get straight to the point, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. sometimes I'm watching, like, a review video on YouTube or, like, I'm watching an unboxing on, like, a product. Oh, Maybe yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I want to see how it looks. Let's say I'm purchasing the AirPods. I'm watching the video to see how it looks, how you're <laughs> using it, what are the features. But then these people want to take 20 minutes to talk about the Apple package and, I'm like, you know, the, the rubber right. on the package. I don't care what the package says. Just get straight to the point. And I've actually noticed something like videos that like, you know, actually get go straight to the point have more views because if I'm watching a video of like you reviewing, let's say this. Yeah, thing, you like, want to see what it's and, about. And then you're doing this whole thing. You're not showing me what's inside. You're just talking about this random like metal in the back. I don't care what this metal is made of, sir. I just want to know about the products in there. So, yeah, that's one thing I really dislike and it's really annoying. So if you're a content creator, you're, if you're providing value to certain people yeah i know youtube like videos are over 10 minutes long i know the algorithms picked it up but mm -hmm. like you know just get straight to the point once you provide value your other videos could be 10 minutes long i don't care just i want you to get straight to the point so that's one thing i don't like i'm gonna give myself an error on for that yes oh okay right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i i ain't getting nothing <laughs> No, all right, all right, it's, just yours. Give me a second. It was mad dry over here for me. No, 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 no. I give you two. No, you got mad jealous. <laughs> I said, I, I said like twenty sentences, and you just said, yeah, 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 cool. Now let me go. I give myself an arrow at the end of it. It's all good, man. I gave you like two. You get arrows on the live tonight. So. But yeah, cool. I want you to take this and like you know. I'll show them, get them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. so this is our first, you know, way to bring the podcast to a different platform so everybody be able I to I think that deserves an air on too, actually. All right. It's cool. Okay, we good. It's we not, good. Not we good. good. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the main goal here is really just to make that transition. So when we do get out of lockdown that, you know, folks will be able to listen to it on Spotify or this or that or yeah. YouTube or I don't know, whatever, whatever channel we have to go through just to give a more detailed conversation. But again, as we said, we're not going to abandon the live aspect. Yeah, we, we love it. Yeah. 
we still want to interact with everybody um, in real time. And again, apologies for audio and stuff. The this sound. is this is you're seeing yeah. us in our beginning stages. We do have equipment. It's just about this is the genesis. Together. Yeah, <laughs> putting together yeah. the proper game plan to make sure all of that comes together yeah. smoothly for your enjoyment. Most definitely, and I um I especially enjoy that I do like like seeing you guys put in the space for like the name and like kind of like you know interacting with you guys in sort of like a live show format. So. I definitely want to keep that on going. Like, we're going to introduce a new feature so that you guys are going to have more of a, like, you know, time to interact with us, to, like, you know, give your opinions. Some of you guys will even have the opportunity to come on the live with us and, like, you know, tell us your thoughts. And also, like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This is our very, very, very first video. Uh, we'd like to, like, keep this on going. Give us a like, subscribe, comment below on what you like, what you don't right. like. Let the conversation go on, Um, you know. Give us your thoughts and, like, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend because, like, you know, this is just the beginning. We're going to keep this ongoing. We're not stopping anytime soon. We're doing this in quarantine, even post quarantine. It's going to be even a lot more better, a lot more cleaner. We're going to be meet, meet each other. Bigly. <laughs> bigly, bigly, bigly. But it's yeah. going to be oh, tremendous. <laughs> yeah, tremendous. It's going to nah, be. No, it's not going to be any of that. Huge. It's gonna be good. It is. It'll be in good. a few years, it's gonna be huge. We're gonna have like this much of an impact on like you know, on like with people that listen to us. And, like we hope to reach like a wider audience and have their like you know perspectives and points of view into like you know the conversations we're having and like see where it goes. So yeah, we'll see you guys on live tonight at nine o'clock. And until then, peace. Be safe. Wash your ass. <laughs> yeah, Not wash your dirty ass. and quarantine. <laughs> Take a shower, work out, and take care of yourself. See you guys another time. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.